Sister Betty Williams uh, Memorial Service. Um, I am Mike Jensen. Um, I will be uh, conducting or officiating this meeting. Um, what, a, what a beautiful day to celebrate this uh, um, Sister Williams' life and, and uh, everybody has their their programs, and we'll go according to the program. Um, our chorister will be uh, Eddie Tegan, um, and we will go, our opening hymn will be I Am a Child of God, and then our our opening prayer will be, or our invocation will be by uh, Raymond Tegan.
avenues out in the field. Um, for those of you not familiar with the military, you're not the boss. When they say, you go, you go. You don't get to pick and choose and say, oh, but I got this going on or that going on. You just go. And some of the hardest times were the second time we were in Germany. And uh, he was stationed at a base where going out in the field was actually going to a, a missile base. And when things got scary and we were put on alert, he didn't get a call saying, hey, tomorrow we're going to be on alert. No, it's going on right now. You go. And she would get a call days later. He's okay, but you know, that all took strength. And she had a lot of it. That strength also came across in confidence. Nobody intimidated her. Nobody. I saw principals get fired. I saw first name relationships with school superintendents. Letters written to senators. She had a lot of confidence in herself. And that intimidation came across as children too. She didn't take nothing from us. Um, she demanded respect. All the way up until last week, she demanded respect. There was no time in her life that that was not first. And if she didn't get respect, she didn't give respect. And her disrespect could cut. I remember every time that we would mouth off and we were within the backhand distance and we were smart. We weren't within backhand distance when we mouthed off. You had to watch out for the shoe. It was going to fly across the room and hit you in the back of the head. And it wasn't until the 80s when I saw Andy Murphy that I realized there was a name for that. It was called kind of boomerang shoes because after she hit you, you had to bring it back to her. <laughs> she had no tact. No, she said what she had to say. We laughed. Well, she laughed. I wouldn't say we laughed so many times because she would say something and I was just like, oh, really? You, did you really say that? I mean, and she would just start laughing and say, yeah, it needed to be said and you know me in my mouth. <laughs> and that was my mom. And the last thing that I took from my mom that was extremely important is family. Every one of us here, she had seven children, she had 19 grandchildren, seven great-grandchildren, and two great-great-grandchildren. And a good portion of us are here right now. It doesn't matter that the wrong is happening. It doesn't matter what's going on in our lives. Because we took that from her. When we lived in Germany, we traveled a lot. We had a big old tourist map with all the tourist traps and the castles. And I hated it. Every weekend, I didn't have to work. We were in a stupid van. I want to see another castle. <laughs> it was horrible when I was a teenager. I wanted to go play with my friends. I didn't want to go look at stupid, broken down buildings. But I tell you what, as an adult, meeting other adults that never left the state they were born in, let alone visited other countries, the things that we did as a family growing up was awesome. I am very, very proud to be able to call her my mom. I'm very grateful that I'm able to call her my mom. You can ask. I'm very thankful 
Thank you for being here. So we, we want to uh, take a moment and remember and, and uh, uh, thank you, Kari, for, uh, for the tribute to life. Uh, what amazing video that we've had. Um, it's those memories that, that really make this moment. And, um, thank you for that. Um, we're going to now open up to, to anybody that wants to come up and, and share some words um, for the next 30 minutes. Um, so we'll turn the time over to you. Um, anybody that wants to come up, please do so. I'd be very much missed if I could come up and say something. We were only married a couple of years, so. <laughs> well, 52 isn't that much, is it? We had some normal times that everybody had, some rough times, some good times. There's times that we were about ready to kill each other. But we always worked over. And I can tell you, she was definitely a wonderful wife. I do have a couple of things I'm very angry at her for to make everybody remember that I'm real good. She didn't give me a birthday present. She died. <laughs> and how can I consider could that be? <laughs> but I really don't think, in fact, I know she didn't plan it that way. It was a quick time on to her. Really, she just wasn't feeling good. She got sick and just wouldn't go. A couple days later, that was it. You know, it was just one of those things on to her. And for all of you, I want you to know, I think she's doing her mission still in genealogy now. She's done a lot of work for the people of her inner ancestors. Put a lot of names in for the temple to get done. And we have a feeling that some of them didn't quite care for it. So I think she's up there right now and explaining on it why she done it and what the purpose of the gospel is. And I really think that the Lord called her back all they haven't did. Because there's probably a few of them up there as rough pig headed as she was <laughs> and not want to go on. So she's there to help them. She spent 52 years helping me, trying to keep me straight. Still never did succeed, but she tried. She worked quite a few years trying to get kids straight, keep them going. And she didn't stop there. She went to the grandkids. And that's something we're all going to miss. But I gave each one of our grandkids, and my daughters, and my son's spouses, one of her pieces of jewelry last night that they can wear today and keep. And the reason why I did that is where they can have something special of her. But the more important thing is, when I see them wearing it, I can think of the fun and the happy times what we had together, even though we were going around and looking down at broken down buildings. <laughs> <laughs> but we did do that. One of the other things that they won't mention on to that we enjoy, when we come back from Germany, we always take the long way and the hard way to get anywhere. It took us a week to us to go from New Jersey to St. Louis, Missouri, because we were sightseeing all the way. It took us a week to go from there to Stockton, California. So 
Sometimes we only go 100 miles down the road, but that's where she went. She couldn't go on the trip from this from A to B. We had to see and take our time. And that's something we all need to do in our own lives. See, take our time, and enjoy it. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead. I want to do this. I didn't know. She can say she's the oldest because she's the oldest girl. Yeah, she is. So I'm Eddie, I'm the second oldest. Um, as far as my mother goes, there's so many things that she was and that she did. And I think everybody has stories and they take certain things from her. Um, one of the things that I take from her, one of the biggest things for me, is we both love Disney. She probably loves him or loves Disney as much as I do. And my mom, in a lot of ways, was my Jimmy Cricket. And I can still hear her in the back of my head saying, Eddie, that's not right, don't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I would cuss because I swear like a sailor, and I get, watch him out. I was in my 30s, and she still slapped me for some of the words that I said. So, she, she taught me a lot of respect. She taught me uh, to how to teach, how to, how to treat people, how to treat them with respect, no matter who they are, how to give them an opportunity to be a friend, and don't just drug, judge right away. So uh, because of that, I've met a lot of people. I've met a lot of really good people. I've got quite a few friends. That I think are very good people. Um, and now, for me, the hardest thing is she's not. She's not going to be here to be my Jimmy Cricket. But I'm comforted in a lot of ways that even though she's not here to say it, I know in the back of my head, she's still going to be saying it. And I'm thankful for the fact that I am her son. And even though she's not here to tell me what's right, what's wrong, I shouldn't have done this, I shouldn't have done that, you did this right, you did that wrong. Some of the things that we talked about just three weeks ago, one of the things that we talked about was how she raised me. And she told me that she wished she would have raised me a different way. And I argued with her and told her no, she was wrong. And that was one of the good things about her, is she didn't mind arguing. I think she loved arguing, and so do I. So all of our life, that's how we communicated a lot of times, was through arguing. And I knew that that was still love. That was the way she loved me. And she would act, actually listen to what I have to say. And the last argument that we had, if you want to call it that, was how she raised me. She felt she should have raised me a different way. And I told her no, because I'm really happy. I don't. I, she taught me to love everybody. And that's that's how I live my life. And I love everybody. I, I'm one of those, every now and then I drink. Um, I haven't drank in quite a while, but when I do, I'm a happy drunk. I run around and I, I love you, man. I'm giving hugs. That's just who I am. Uh, if, if I'm in a happy situation, that's what I do. And that's, that's what I got from her. And now, I've been around my Aunt Jo, I've been around her quite a bit, and it seems that she's going to take the form of my Jiminy Cricket because she's going to be telling me to wash my mouth. <laughs> but that's okay because I know my mother She's up there, she's watching over me, and I believe now she's going to be my guardian angel. And I love her to death, and I know everyone else here does too. Thank you for coming.
gave her a hard time growing up. She gave me a hard time. It's mutual. And we fought all the time. All the time. And I was ready to go. We never talked to her. We never see her. We were ready to split. And it's so funny because out of all the kids, everyone's like, Gwen, you're mean. Gwen, stop doing that to mom. Do all this. What did I do? I came back. I came back. Me and my mom's had talks and things that we've gone through in our life, it's connected us because it was something that only we got to. We experienced it at different levels, but it's something that brought us together. And mom always raised us family strong. Family is the most important thing, especially being in the military. That's all we had was each other. And, you know, it, it didn't matter. Your family doesn't necessarily mean life. Family is just family. Anybody who's there, anybody who's got your back and you've got theirs is family. My husband, he's always been saying how, you know, he's astonished. Because here he comes down, my mom and my dad, open arms, I love you. To him, those are his parents. That's his mom. He can't be in this building. That's his mom. Maybe he can't. It's hard for him. It's like, this is his family. No, I didn't know. The other family is his family. But this is where he found love. This is where he found acceptance. My mom made me a very strong built, very strong built, independent woman. She's always sat there and said, never depend on new way. Always did it. You know, you have people there for you, you know, by your side, support, but always be able to do it for yourself. Don't ever let somebody have that control over you. Don't let anybody control. Guide with each other, join with each other, but never control. And I did it. I, you know, my life's carried me all the way through. I used to be my mom, we had our issues. But she made me the woman who I am today. And I am so proud, so proud of it, my mom. And I know she's proud of me too. She, oh, when I graduated school, she goes around telling everybody, she's a nurse, she's a nurse. Like, I haven't heard talk so much. She's got compliments about me and talk about she It's kind of <laughs> nursing school. But she's always going around, you know, because I finally achieved it, talked about it for years. But I finally achieved that dream. I'm so glad that she saw it. She helped me. I couldn't have done it without my parents. There's no way I could have done it. They helped raise my kids while well, I go to school and I'm working. I'm doing my 80, 90, 100 hours a week. My parents have my kids. No complaints. They're right there. That's what failing is. You are there for each other to help make each other grow in life, to be better. No regrets, none whatsoever about anything that's come my way. She's always, always learned. Don't, if I'm going to do it, I better do it full heartedly, 100%. And if it wasn't good, I'm still doing it. You know, and I accept anything and everything that comes my way. And I know it. But every lesson, everything that she's taught me, created the woman who I know. I know that I don't miss her, but I know she's still here. She's always saying, yep, no, nope, I'm dying, I'm going to heaven. I know where I'm going. I might not be that celestial kingdom, but I'm going. <laughs> and so, you know, I knew she was always there. And I was saying, this life is a blink of light. It's just a little milestone. After we die, we will be there forever. So yes, I miss her. Yes. I don't like this, but I'm happy with what we do have in our connections. We do have many blessings because I'm not as sad because I will be there with her right next to it. You know, we're going to draw debates and arguments still at times. Hey, that's who we are.
story before it started with Betty and Jean, because Betty came from a family of seven. We had a six year old woman boy in our family. And of course, the only one who had a match was Betty. I was the youngest of all the kids. Betty and I was at home by ourselves. So Betty and Jean and I and Diane, <laughs> Billy, wherever he went to, we all kind of grew up together. Diane and I, we kind of competed who had what boyfriend now and then, and who was doing better than the other one. <clears throat> the first time I went to Jean's house for dinner with Betty and Jean and his folks, Billy sat across from me. <laughs> Had him in a, they made spaghetti. We came, trying to be real polite. Of course, I spilled spaghetti on the bill. Nasty! I was so embarrassed. No. So embarrassed. And Lori was there also. I thought Lori. So all of us kind of chummed around, but my folks were the second shift. So I was with Betty and Jean an awful lot. And Betty was a big tattletale all the time. She tattled, tattled, tattled on me. Well, when she started dating Jean, she didn't say, why are you tattling on her? She's not tattling on you. And you and I do stuff we're not supposed to. Quit tattling on her. Well, Mama said, I don't care what Mama said. She's not tattling on you. Quit tattling on her. So I kind of like you. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to be very, very close over the years. When Betty matched for children, I thought for sure I was going to be the last one. I waited 10 years to have my child. I thought, little Betty was born, okay, I'm going to have the last one. I'm going to have the last baby. <coughs> oh, no, not Jean and Betty. Here comes Don. Don has to come big seven, just like mom and dad. So we, we had a lot of fun, but we also were a large family. We did a lot of traveling. We, back in the day, go to somebody's house. They'd be playing games, all seven of us, and being lined up in a bed somewhere and probably more kids with us. So she had a good teacher and she kept the trend on. She was the only one with seven children. So, okay. Now I'm going to go. Yeah. You're going to turn on me on the phone. Okay. He's not going to go back. Well, I'm going to go back even before Jean and then I got together, Joe. She's the only sister. And I am the youngest in the family. I don't care what the boys say. But that was for everybody on the oldest. Only the oldest girl was the only one. But Jojo and I used to get in a lot of trouble because <laughs> her sister lived around the corner. So we used to do a lot of things. Well, Betty had a bad crush on Jean. And being a kid, I used to play this card game, and I bet you might remember it. I used to do these fortune telling who you're going to marry. You pick your boyfriend out for two with dark hair, two with blonde hair, and tell a story. Betty believed it. Well, she came over, you got to do mine. Jojo and I said, okay, well, one of them was pick G. He was dating somebody else, and I go, look, you know, he's got a girlfriend. But it, it picked him. Who would ever know that they didn't have get married? Seven years later. Yeah. So she thought, you really know how to do fortune. No, it was just pure luck. <laughs> <laughs> it was no fortune. It's a kid's game. But we used to have fun with that. And I had to get up and share it because JoJo was in on it. Yeah. And we, so we got up there and we had to do the fortune. And then it fell for me. So, yeah, she picked you. She was so excited. <laughs> it was really cute. But I thought somebody needed to get up and say something about that in front of our family. So I, <sighs> Jojo started. So I, I <laughs> needed you again, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> but who never thought, right, from going out and picking up toilets together out in the middle of the road, and all those other fun things we did with the family to help them out and we really had a good we had a good topic. And my mom and I and Betty and Jean we used to talk about some of the things we did way back then to help Charlotte out. And who would ever thought when Betty picked, we got excited and I said, gosh, I might be honest. 
girlfriend. He's not going to leave her. Well, a few months later, he left her, and he was with Betty. And so she's been in a family for now about a year, so she's, what, we can say she's not our sister. That's only when I was going to be a sister. They had to bring her back. <laughs> I had to share about that. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, you told me, I'm telling my <laughs> 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 She 
take on her sisters and be like, these are my sisters, and I'm going to love them, and I'm going to be with them. And she did the same thing with Uncle Junior. Even when we all sit there and like, why are we doing this? And she, she made sure we knew why we were doing it. And my mom, she had a lot of friends for that purpose, to help her fight for everybody else. And I think that gave mom power to do mom, to be mom, and to be there for everyone else. Because that's what we can make it. Everybody, Josh, I'm a college grandkid, and there's two things that I took away from this beautiful woman. One is love. We're all here because we love her. She loves everybody differently. She loves everybody in the right way. And the second thing is honesty. You lied to her, she let you do it. She wouldn't give away, she wouldn't 10 years from now, she'd still hold it, she's going to tell you. Honesty is huge in her life. This big line. I didn't get the honor of my grandma for as long as all of you have. For the short time that I knew her and we were together, those memories were indescribable. She was the grandma I never had the privilege of having. So having her was an experience I would never forget. Many people want you call me grandma or grandma. Her mom or dad. But as soon as I met her, she said it was the pain of her To her, me not being related didn't matter. She cared for me. So when everybody else was having me on the side conversations, she would include me and talk to me. It didn't matter what we talked about. Just that we talked about something. And sometimes I'm going to tell you right now, Grandma had the best concept of the whole family. <laughs> <laughs> and man, was she the one to go for a fun story. Grandma was the queen when it came to it. So don't let that fool you. She was a stubborn lady. It took a lot to get her to let Grandma send me sometimes. <laughs> Besides that, she was a kind-hearted person. She would think of others more than you'd realize. She really looked out for those she loved. I'm glad I got to be someone in her life. One of my proudest moments was finally making her laugh. Oh man, oh man, was I happy about that. Because I worked harder on that than being A in Spanish. <laughs> she was patient. I suck at Mexican training. So when I mess up, she would be a little frustrated, but she understood that the Mexican at the table couldn't figure out a simple game called Mexican training. <laughs> One thing to know, Never use your phone and play. I learned my lesson from Grandma. <laughs> Some of you may have been scared of her. You still might be. But don't, because if you wear sneakers, jeans, or a dress above your knees, good luck. And if you didn't, you're safe for today. <laughs> Grandma is beautiful, kind, amazing, caring, loving, and in respect, she was a good looking lady in high school. Grandma, the one lucky man. <laughs> Today could be sad, but it's okay to have a little smile because life goes on and Grandma will always be watching. And I hope I made her laugh a second time today. Thank you, and I hope I brought some light on the droopy time.
like to thank everybody for coming. Um, I know it's been said numerous times. Uh, growing up, seven kids, being the third oldest. At work, my mom would say many things. She used to work for me. How wonderful is that? I was my mom's boss. Um, so <clears throat> she kissed up to me quite a bit. Anyways, uh, she always
Anytime with the church get crafts, anytime the lodge get crafts, she grabbed me along. So I ended up doing a lot of crafts with her. But one thing I do remember is you tell somebody you're going to be there, you are showing up. Make sure you are there no matter what for them. And those are the things I really got from my mom besides that is everything. It's volunteer spouse, get crafts, and actually show up when you tell them right there. Okay. say about that is I've known her for 18 years and I've learned that she's like an iceberg. What you see on the surface doesn't amount to how much love that was inside of her heart for everybody. We've heard stories about she does things for others. That was her thing with service. She was always there for everyone else. She loved everybody on their own level. She, she was so full of love, and she was accepting. Now, if you did something wrong, she would definitely let you know. And she may let you know a few days later, a few months later, maybe a couple of years later. But she still forgave you, and she still loved you. But I'm honored that she is the grandmother of my children. That they've heard the stories that she had to tell. That they've learned, each one of them learned something different from her. And their personalities have grown because of the stories that they've heard from Grandma, the things that they've learned from her. And she'd be so proud to know that everybody's here. She'd be mad at us for crying over her. She'd be like, why are you crying? No need for that. We know that she's going to be up with Heavenly Father and still working and doing things for others and loving everyone else. And be 
less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy begin being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about you spent your dash? These are always uh, hard talks to prepare. Um, it's interesting to think about um, the things that um, that are to be said. Um, I am very grateful for uh, the opportunity to be a part of uh, Sister Betty Williams Dash. Um, even though, like 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 many of us, come at different times and, and notice different things, um, and my part was a very small compared to many of your portions of that dash. Um, nevertheless, it's, it's always important and. great experience to be a part of, of someone so amazing. Um, as I thought about the words that I was going to share today, um, there's one thing that I want everybody to take away. Um, one, one word to, to think about um, that I hope to, to reiterate multiple times, and that is to remember. Um, life is hard, and each of us um, are always trying to find our place in it what we should do, what we should be. Um, as we grow and learn and make mistakes and learn and make some more mistakes, um, uh, we, begin to be, we begin to create this, uh, what I like to call, I am. This, this person that, um, that you are at the core. Um, and that person um, is usually somebody different when you're by yourself. It's somebody that, that you don't let a lot of people see you um, because it's it's your own personal I am. Um, and in many cases, um, you are the ones that you've got to see uh, Betty I am, her, her true self, um, who she was in her realest manner. Um, and that's a very special thing to see. And a lot of people, and it's rare to, to get to experience that. Um, to help explain a little bit of what I mean, uh, I turn to the scriptures. Um, in Alma chapter 29, uh, verses 10 through 12, um, it says, And behold, when I see many of my brethren truly penitent, and come to the Lord their God, then is my soul filled with joy. Then do I remember what the Lord has done for me. Yea, even that he hath heard my prayer, Yea, then do I remember his merciful arm, which he extended towards me. Yea, and I also remember the captivity of my fathers, for I surely do know that the Lord did deliver them out of bondage. And by this did establish his church, yea, the Lord God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, did deliver them out of bondage. Um, in Moroni chapter 10, verse 3, it says, Behold, I would exhort you, that when ye shall read these things, if it be wisdom in God, that ye should read them, that ye should that ye would remember how merciful the Lord hath been unto the children of men. From the creation of Adam even down to this time, that ye shall receive these things and ponder in your hearts. And then lastly, in Psalms 42, verse 4, it says, When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I have gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. The reason I bring up these scriptures, um, they all have that word remember in them. And it's, it's a time of reflection, um, exactly what we are doing here. Um, and it's, it's usually after the fact. Um, Alma had been through a lot um, with his, uh, as, a, as a prophet and, and as one that tried to teach the gospel. Um, and it wasn't until after all of that 
that he was able to see and remember the things that he's been blessed with. Um, you know, this is a, a special time um, for a lot of you because this is that, that exact moment. Um, we get caught up in the moments, um, in, in the things that we do day to day, in our jobs, in, in life, and it takes, um, sadly, uh, some of these times where we can really sit down and stop and reflect and notice all the good that, that has happened. The things that that uh, Betty has done for you and, and, and encouraged you and inspired you to be um, and to help you build your own I am, that person you are at your core. So my story, I remember uh, we, I have a, a small family, I've got three little kids. Um, we moved here not too long ago. In about five years now, um, and uh, my first time at church, um, I was pretty new. My wife was from there, so she knew everybody, but I knew nobody. Um, and it's a small town, so everybody knew everybody except for me. Um, and I was over uh, a class of the youth um, and helped teach there. And one Sunday, I uh, I called up. Brother Williams to help me teach about family history. Um, and that is one of my first experiences um, there at church. And the Williamses were one of the first people that I met. And I was nervous because I, I didn't know the Williamses at all. I didn't know what to expect. Um, I was asking them to help me in a, a time that, you know, with youth and Probably always hard to work with youth sometimes. Um, but he was excited and willing to teach them and, and show me a little bit more about family history and um, even just a few, I think it was actually only a month ago, um, we did the same thing. Um, this is five years later. Sister Williams and Brother Williams were there and For me, that's when I was able to experience uh, Betty's I am. Like I said, it's a rare time, something that you keep to yourself. But it was amazing to see her in that atmosphere. She loved him. She loved researching and understanding where she came from and, and her family that was there. And that's when I got to see her out here, to see who she really was, her excitement, her, her laughter, her, her, uh, her real self. And I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful for this opportunity to be here and to participate in, in her life and, and to be part of her dash. Um, so again, uh, the one thing that, if there's anything that I could have you take away from all these little words that I've said is to remember. Remember who she is, remember what she's done for you, and remember her, her I am that is precious um, to each of us and the opportunity that you've got to know that. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. So, to the program.
Oh, gracious Lord, God, I thank you for the time that we had doing it. My dear grandmother, and I hope that she will have a great time there in heaven with you. Oh, great Lord, I thank you for everything. And we pray to the great Lord. Everybody, we pray to Jesus. Thank you everyone for coming. And programs that were made by see, I forgot your name already, right. James. <laughs> he did the program. God he did the beautiful work up here. And they are screaming, screaming yes, so her sisters who couldn't make it aren't being able to watch it.